It's happening in the police service, the fire service, education, health. It's happening all over the place right now. We need to stop it. Here's an update on a story we brought you a while ago. I mean, this is just an extraordinary territory. The Royal Air Force unlawfully discriminated against white men in a recruitment drive aimed at boosting diversity. According to an official inquiry, Air Chief Marshal Sir Richard Knighton, the new head of the RAF, said he apologised unreservedly to all of those affected, including the former head of recruitment, who was forced to resign rather than implement an order that she believed, correctly, to breach equality legislation. Despite the damning findings, the chief of the air staff said none of the RAF's senior leadership, including his predecessor, Sir Mike Wingston, would face no kind of sanction. Instead, he blamed the debacle on legal advice that incorrectly said a push in 2020 and 2021 to fast-track ethnic minority and female recruits into training slots was positive action, which is a legal way to improve diversity when it was actually positive discrimination, which is completely unlawful. Tim Davis is a former RAF fighter pilot. Tim, good afternoon to you. Hi, how are you doing? Good to have you. Nice to have you with us. Um, what was your reaction when you first heard about this uh, going back now, when the, the powers that be had decreed they didn't really want white men applying for jobs in the RAF? Well, I mean, I did a, I did a YouTube thing on this. It must be now back around August, September the time. I've spoken uh, to everyone pretty much involved in this, right from the top all the way down to the bottom. And one thing I just think we need to clarify uh, straight away is that there are many, 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 many good people in the Air Force who didn't want anything to do with this. Yeah. And to be fair, some really, really solid people. I've chatted to a lot of them and it got wrapped up, I think, in ego through the very top of the Air Force. And unfortunately, yeah, it's manifested itself in some exceptionally negative publicity for the service. I mean, th their point was that they were trying to, you know, it, it's it, it's a traditional outfit, the RAF, I suppose, similarly, maybe not quite as pronounced, but, you know, the Army and the Navy, I guess, you, you could sort of, th these long-standing institutions and organisations have uh, just historically been areas that have had more white people in it and they thought maybe we should get more and white men maybe we need more women maybe we need not need need more white non-white faces so that was their thinking but the implementation of this or the attempted implementation was awful yeah i think what you mean there and i get what you're saying here no worries i think what that actually meant was they wanted more ethnic minorities and women in the services yeah. the royal air force is the youngest of all three services uh, it's had a very bad report recently come out from um, uh, a commission that was led into the leadership of the Royal Air Force that says only 18% of the service actually have any faith in the leadership. That's the lowest of any of the, the services. So wow. we know we've got a problem in the seniority of, of the Royal Air Force, unfortunately. And again, you know, I put this on my channel. I've broken this down. The problem is, Ian, if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to be quite open about it, is the Royal Air Force has the lowest of any ethnic minorities in it, with just 2.5%. That's much lower than the Navy much lower than the army but if you think about it of course the army has Gurkhas which boosts their figure the navy recruits heavily from the commonwealth also boosts their figures the air force doesn't have that but the air force does have 16 percent women which is more than any of the other services and i think ben mollis i think he, he said to uh the chiefs sort your diversity out i've got a big issue with um uh, forcing diversity into meritocratic hierarchical organizations of course i'm sure you're aware having trained many many pilots for, mm. for many many years in the air force myself it's backfired spectacularly and this should actually be a turning point in uk history where we say enough enough it's enough of this we're not going to stand for it anymore we're british people we're fair we're tolerant we believe in justice only the best people should be in jobs that require the best people to be there yeah and we shouldn't be apologizing for recruiting some white men right well, it's not even that. You know, I've trained loads of people. I want the best. I've trained women. I've trained minorities. I've trained yeah. white men. And they all die in the same way, Ian, to be fair. When that jet drops you onto the side of a cliff, it just spreads you over about two and a half miles. It doesn't matter what colour you are. You just die in the same way. We still phone up the parents. It doesn't matter what colour you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are. If you're not good enough, that jet's just going to kill you. The jet, you don't dial in when you get into the aircraft. By the way, I'm a young Pakistani man from Bradford. You don't do that. Yeah. It doesn't care. It cares about how good you are. And that's the problem. It's happening in the police service, the fire service education health it's happening all over the place right now we need to stop it we need to say we're fair and we are an accepting not tolerant we're an accepting society we embrace 
levels of immigration that are sustainable within the country. Let's make it work together and let's get the best people into our military. Top stuff. Tim, thank you. Uh, very thorough and robust response from Tim Davis. We will speak again to Tim, I'm sure, former RAF fighter pilot.